Okay, so in our last video, we talked about the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, and how that virus works. Today, we're going to talk about the disease that it causes. And that disease is called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. And since that's a mouthful, we call it AIDS, which is just an acronym. So when HIV infects the body, it goes through three stages of infection. And I'm going to go over those one by one. So let's number them. One, two, and three. When HIV first infects the body, it goes through a phase called acute infection. infection. And this is characterized by flu-like symptoms. Flu-like symptoms. So a sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, fever, headache, general feeling bad. And HIV isn't usually diagnosed at this stage because it looks so much like a like like the flu or like mono um, that it's usually missed and this stage lasts for about two weeks and then it fades and the infection enters the next stage and we call this phase the latent phase where there aren't really any symptoms that's why it's called latent now the virus isn't dormant it kind of lurks in your body, um, continually destroying T cells. But your body's also making those helper T cells that it destroys at a similar rate. So the amount of T cells declines more slowly than if the virus was just running rampant. And your body compensates really well, so you don't show any symptoms. And this can last usually around eight years but it can be as few as three and as much as 20, and that depends on the individual and what strain of the virus they have. But as the virus starts to win the race against those helper T cells, you start to reach a threshold where your body just can't compensate anymore. And this is what we call AIDS. And it's the final phase of an HIV infection. And clinically, it's defined as having less than 200 helper T cells per microliter of blood. Um, it's really just important to know that it's very, very low. You have far fewer than normal helper T cells, and your body's immune system isn't able to ramp up the way that it normally does. And you see two main symptoms that kind of alert a doctor or alert a patient to the fact that there's, there's an infection with HIV going on. And the first one is cancer. Cancer can be caused by several viruses, including human herpes virus 8, which causes a skin cancer called Kaposi's sarcoma, and can also cause lymphoma. And the human papilloma virus is another big one um, that can cause cervical cancer, among others. So these cancers can be a sign that someone has HIV because their body can't recognize the virus and kill it or they can't recognize the cancer and kill it. And another thing that we see is something called opportunistic, opportunistic infections. And opportunistic infections are kind of what they sound like. They're infections that use the opportunity of a downed immune system to wreak havoc. Um, so these infections are ones that you don't normally see in healthy individuals. A particular kind of pneumonia called pneumocystis pneumonia. Um, you see a lot more of infections that normal people with healthy immune systems only get a couple times a year. Um, and these can be really, really severe and actually often fatal. So that's what happens when the immune system is 
below this threshold for AIDS. Your body just can't compensate anymore. So I want to take a step back and look at how HIV is transmitted and how its transmission can be prevented, because the best treatment is really prevention in this case. So here we have transmission. And over here, we will put prevention. And there's no vaccine for HIV, unfortunately. It's a very difficult virus to make a vaccine for. Um, so really preventing transmission without a vaccine has been the main way of keeping people healthy. And there are three main ways that people get HIV. So I'm going to just number those. Two comes before three. And the first one is through sexual transmission. Because HIV is carried in body fluids, and those body fluids can be exchanged during sexual intercourse. And this is actually the most common way that HIV is transmitted now. And there's a couple ways that sexual transmission can be prevented. And the main way is by use of barriers that keep those bodily fluids from touching each other and being transferred during sex, thus preventing the virus from ever getting into someone's body. But if those barriers aren't effective or someone doesn't use them, there's something called post-exposure prophylaxis. And I'm going to abbreviate that as PEP. And what this consists of is once you've been exposed to the virus, the virus takes a little while to make copies of itself and start to really ramp up its infection. So you can take a whole bunch of antiretroviral drugs, which we'll talk about in a little bit, to keep the virus from ever getting a foothold in your body and prevent infection that way. And it's also pretty effective. So the next way that HIV can be transmitted is through blood contact. Um, so people who share needles with each other, like IV drug abusers, um, can acquire it from each other. Physicians or healthcare personnel getting stuck by a needle when caring for an HIV positive patient can also get the infection. Um, and then people can get it through blood transfusions, although this is a lot less common now that we're able to check the blood supply for HIV. Um, so with bloodborne transmission, there's a couple ways of preventing it. For IV drug abusers specifically, there's something called a needle exchange. I'm just going to abbreviate it like that. Um, where people are able to trade in their used needles for clean needles so that they're not transmitting diseases to other people who are also using the drugs. And these are actually really, really effective at preventing HIV from being transmitted. And then again, we have PEP. And the last way that it can be transmitted is through childbirth. And the main prevention for this is by treating mom for her disease really well. And preventing the virus from crossing that placenta and getting into baby. But what are these treatments? Let's talk for just a minute about what the main treatments are. And nowadays, treatment pretty much consists of a class of drugs called antiretrovirals. And as you can imagine, these only attack the retrovirus, which is the class of virus that HIV is. And if you'll remember from the previous video, HIV uses an enzyme called reverse transcriptase to get its DNA into the host by copying it from the RNA carried in the virus. But Reverse transcriptase makes a lot of mistakes, which means that HIV mutates really, really fast. So you can't just give one drug, you have to give what's called a cocktail, which can consist of three or more drugs that all target different parts of the virus so that it's a lot less likely to become resistant to all of the treatments all at once. And these treatments are actually incredibly effective. To end a depressing video on a really positive note, people whose infections are caught pretty early and who, are, who take an appropriate course of antiretroviral drugs can expect to live a completely normal lifespan.